What's up YouTube? My name's Cricky, welcome back to the channel. That came up all right. Um, I'll just put Chuck to bed because he's been busy this morning. He's been busy making these let. That's my, can you see? Where are you? Oh, here we go. Uh, there we go. That's an engine mount. Got two of them. Um, and the idea is, is like up here where I've got the, the engine mounts there, I can clamp this on so I can get my centers and they're spaced exactly the same as that. So that's what the OEM did. We'll drill a couple of holes through the tube and then these are gonna get set in and I'll weld them in place. They are a little bit long, but um, basically they'll get shoved in, welded, one there, one on the other side like that. I'll weld them all in, then I'll dress it down so it just looks like this at the end of the day. And what it gives me is a blind hole. And I'm going with a blind hole simply because the bolts that came out of it was horrible. Um, where you get a bolt that joins two bits of something or other together with a nut on the back and some thread sticking out the back of it, it especially there, it's gonna get all the road rot and grime and salt and everything else and they just rusted away to nothing um, and they were seized and they weren't very nice getting them out and I think I actually broke one of them <laughs> so I'm going with blind holes a um, couple of reasons that's going to stop all the grot and muck and stuff getting in there and rotting stuff um, but also it means I get more thread engagement so this is drilled and tapped to 30 mil down whereas a nut is like I don't know 10 12 mil something like that so I'll get lots more thread engagement, so it should be more secure. -er. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. So I need to make a few more of these up because these are going to be dotted all over the place. So what am I doing? Right, well, you're going to have to excuse the workshop onesie because I'll be chipping off to me work in a bit, but I wanted to come in and try and get a jump on some of this stuff. I want to chop the next bit of the frame off and see if I can join the two together. That's what I want to do, but we'll see. Um, what is the time? It's getting on. Right, let's yap. Right, so it's this bit here that I want to do next. Um, put me cheaters down for a bit. Um, the old seat frame did used to come in up here, obviously. We've got a couple of little holes there, which is just for gas expansion when you're welding it and whatnot. Um, but basically, I want to chomp this off as low as I can, because this bit of the tube is straight. That ain't got a bend in it. So I can slug that, that'll be fine. And we'll have the same on the other side where it goes into this tube. But I want to get rid of this bit and join it back up to here. So it's going to come probably down in a curve and back into this. Um, my cheaters, if I was to... No, that's too far. Right, something like that. That could work. Um, that could work quite well, actually. I reckon. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll have this off here, so I've got as much straight as I can. We'll have a straight bit below it as well. That way I can turn some of it down to fit in here. I'll hollow it out as well, just to help with penetration. And then that'll get bossed in one end shoved up there in there with a gap in the middle um, and I'll cross drill that one and that one as well just because then I can do a plug weld um, just to make sure nothing's going anywhere he can come down like that and then we'll cope it into this bit so it marries up with that boss something like that I reckon would do it would be nice if this curve was just continual, but this bit is further back than that bit. So it's always going to have a bit of a doicky going on anyway. And I don't want to move that back for two good reasons. One is I've already done that bit and I ain't doing it again. But two, it'll also change the geometry of the bike. So all that lot has to stay where it's put. But I reckon that could do it. I reckon that would do it a treat. Right, angle grinder. I would, oh yeah, I've got my power hacksaw. Where is he? Uh, that's what I've got. It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> really what a reciprocating saw. Um, 
It's, well, no, it's not rubbish. It does have its uses, but this ain't one of them. Um, the blades is like, well, one, they're really, really, really fine teeth. Really, you want something like a 14 TPI or something like that. But the speed that this thing goes at is too quick. Um, it'd be all right on thin, skinny stuff, but not chunky stuff like this. So we're back to ye olde faithful. And is he gonna, he's not gonna go that way. And I'm gonna need the lead. Right. Um, which one are you? That one. All right, there we go. Is he gonna get all the way through? He might do. He might do. I wanna leave that engine mount intact. If I possibly, possibly can. Um, yeah. That first attempt that I had at this, where it disappeared off underneath the bench because I got it wrong, I had a bend in it, which looks <coughs> pretty much like it's going to do. <coughs> so I'm just chopped it off. And he can go something like that, which would be perfect. That'll do it. Right, so what we'll do is we'll get a mark up here. Um, Sharpie, where's you gone? All right, we'll get a mark up here. Um, so if I can get that straight-ish and kind of in the middle of the cope, um, and we'll stick a mark. Are you even straight? Leave it a little bit long. <sighs> Come on. Why is it this hard? Right there. Would help if my Sharpie worked. I need to get some more. Um, because this end is, yeah, I've got loads of straight bit there and I've got a straight bit there. So if I chop it off here and that doesn't land exactly right, because I've left it a little bit long on purpose, then I can just shave away at that and it'll basically move this curve up until that bend lands smack in the middle of that, you know, that um, boss. So I'd rather sneak up on it rather than go too short and cock it all up. There is going to be a little bit of a gap in here, so this doesn't have to be perfect, which is why I'm not too bothered if that isn't exactly, you know, roundy roundy sort of thing. But that'll do, and then it's just a case of marking, once I get this in and the sleeve done, it's just a case of marking up for that cope. Ideal. Right, let's chop that bit off. Where's my mark? There he is. See, never chuck away your cock-ups because you never know when they're going to be handy. <laughs> Still going in the scrap bin though. <laughs> right, let's have you off there. Uh, you're flat on that. Right then. 
It's a shame I can't have that as one curve. That would be quite cool. But in order to do that, because this sticks out past this bit, in order to do it, I've got to shorten that bit up. Well, it's wide there and it's narrower here. So I can't just cut a chunk out and shove it forward because it'll be different. And I haven't got the tool in to remake this because it's a weird radius. Um, and I really want to keep this side tube just because when the tank's sitting on top of it, with this tube just underneath it sort of following the line of the tank, that's the bit that screams out bandit and I want it to look bandit or recognisable as a bandit. So that's why we're having to go to all these lengths. But uh that is kind of what it's going to look like and he's like oh no one mil gap up there that's not flat i don't care if that is a little bit wibbly wobbly because it's all going to get welded up anyway so that is fine that'll do right i think i'm going to dress that dress all this malarkey off um we've got a little hole there Obviously, where the tube goes onto it, and then you weld him around it, they tend to drill a hole. Like every, every single point where there was a connection of one tube into another, like there'll be one up here, you get this little hole. I will get a picture and show you. Um, from my understanding, this is from where you're welding, obviously, you're heating it all up. So the air that's inside it, you know, the pressure's going to increase because that's related to temperature and stuff. And this just gives the expanding gases somewhere to go. Um, so that's why there's little holes in there. But I can plug that up. That'll be fine. That'll be absolutely fine. And when I'm welding this to that, well, there's going to be a cross hole here and everything else. So the air will have somewhere to go. Right, let's um, dress him up. You beauty. <laughs> I was going to have to get a piece. Of, well, what I was going to do was get um, a slug of steel, mil uh, turn it down so it just fitted inside this tube, and then hollow out into. But I've, I've been grubbing in the scrap bin, and I've got a piece of tube. It's three mil, so slightly thicker than this. Um, but he just, just fits in there like that. So that's going to be a treat. Um, what I'll do is I'll cross drill this. I'll have this off to length and stick it up there and see how we're doing. Uh, drill some cross holes in there for some plug welds. And I reckon that is going to be my sleep, which is handy because I'm going to need one on the other side as well. Come on. Need to clean up. That'll be all right. That'll be fine. Right, so the, curiously enough, where the seat freight, I mean, there is no penetration to it at all. Nothing. Um, I've just had to take the burrs off where this little hole is. This is one of the little holes I was telling you about. Um, but the reason why I'm going for, come on, oh, don't be a cock. There we go. You need to be shortened up a little bit because you're not in the middle of my boss. 
but you get the gist. So if I trim this one down, it will send it up and I'll just keep whittling away at this end until this lands smack in the middle of that. That'll do it. It's gonna look all right. Oh, it's gonna look all right. Nice little gap in there to get weld. Quite a bit bigger a gap there as well. So I might be trimming up that bit, not that bit. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> right, so the reason why I'm going tube and not just a slug of steel in the middle of this, I mean, one, I've got it and it's a perfect fit. <laughs> but the other reason is, um, even if it was gonna go for a slug, it wouldn't be a solid one. I was gonna hollow it out. And the reason being is for when it comes to the welding, just to get better penetration, basically. If that's a solid slug of steel, one bit that long is actually going to weigh quite a lot <laughs> so by holding it out i'm saving a bit of weight but more importantly on the welding side of stuff if it's solid there's an awful lot of mass there to like wick the heat away from the weld and you know you've got to get it really bloody hot to to you know sort of melt something that's 34 mil welding is not gluing it's not a glue gun you need to get penetration into it which means you need to melt everything together and then introduce a filler so it all kind of combines um so if it's hollowed out there's less mass to absorb all the heat so you get a better penetration on on the piece of metal basically that's it um apart from that this tube is two mil same as the original this is three mil it goes like yay deep into this bit and it's going to be i don't know what is that it's got to be um where are we 38 mil so 38 mil going up into that tube i mean that's you know the join is going to be way stronger um still got to cross drill it i just drill in the outside of the tube yeah the outside tube not the inner one and then when i weld it we're probably going to leave like a two mil gap um just so i can really get the weld into it um there is going to be a little bit of a bigger gap there because i'll cut that wonky <laughs> well that's all right that'd be fine it'll all be dressed up um but that way i can hit this tube that tube and the original frame and have the whole thing set as one that'll be strong as anything That'd be brilliant. Right, I've got to get this out now. <laughs> oh, come on. Right, so I've got my holes drilled for my plug welds, or puddle welds, or whatever you want to call them. So uh, just a 10 mil drill, pilot then a 10 mil drill. It just gives me something, you know, a, a decent area to work into basically. Um, this is all chopped down to size now. I've just been having a little bit by little bit off in the bandsaw and I've also straightened this edge up as well. Um, just put some tape around it, got the angle grinder on it. So that's all nice and cushy. So now it's a case of coping it. So there is gonna be a little bit of a gap up there he falls smack in line I and mean, then he is good right let's see if we can mark this cope up which way has it got to go um right it's gonna be that way isn't it so with him on the outside like that this is where another set of hands would come in dead handy That'll do. So there's all my marks, basically. So just to explain it, where are you? There you go. So this is what if, if the boss over there was to carry on straight through this tube, that's one side of it and that's the other side of it. This is just the center line of this tube itself. And that one is the center line of the boss. So normally two thirds rule so about there you can see i've divided it into three and um, the side that this tube is going into you go down a third so two thirds is left untouched and then you just draw a mark from there to the edge and from there to the edge just as a straight line when viewed from above and then if you chop it straight down there and straight across there um, with your angle grinder you should get a pretty close cope um, 
or notch or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then it's just a case of goofing about and fine tuning it. So, right, let's give that a go then. Right, I did have a go at notching tube on the mill and it does work. Basically, I just shoved a normal drill bit in there with a hold saw, put something in the vise and away you go sort of thing. Um, you can do it, it does work. And it does work quite happily. But by the time you've been faffing about, trying to get the thing set up and everything, it, I just find it quicker to do it this way. So, we are close. And as always, it's these pointy bits um, that is in the way. So I need to trim those down. The angle don't look bad. We just need to move that in a bit. So essentially, this is where you just start fiddling. Um, that will get you close. Um, you know, you can see the shape of the tube and everything else, but these pointy bits, because you've got the depth of the material as well, you always end up sort of rounding those off top and bottom. And as you do that, this tube will sneak further in, you know, the, the tube that's going that way, the boss in this case, that one, uh, it will sneak up this tube just because everything gets to be a bit of a snugger fit. So that's what we're going to do. And I've lost the other bit. There we go. You can go in there. Come on. There we go. We'll trim this up and give it another bash. then there we go lands nicely in the middle of the boss which is cool uh, I've got my gap back up here as well so there's like I don't know a mil and a half two mil gap there just so I can get in and I can hit that bottom uh, you know the inner tube um, I've done a little bit of well prep put a chamfer on all the tube ends up here just to help the weld get in there but that is how it's going to be Right, let's, um, hum, hum, hum. I'm going to stick the other rail on, see what the whole thing looks like. Oh, come on. There we go. Right then. He's all straight down there. That's fitted up. He's in the middle and I've got my gap, which is cold. <laughs> um, looks like a camel's toe, doesn't it? Um, where this sort of comes in here and then comes back out again, I am going to put a gusset in this back bit. Just something in there just to help strengthen it up a little bit. Um, I'm trying to keep the inside free because we've got that stupid engine mount down the bottom that I've got to clear. Um, we're about, I don't know, six mil off the back of this. So there's not a great deal of room to get anything else in there, but I can beef that up a bit and strengthen it. So that should all be good. Um, straight between the two exhaust ports, which is cool. Ignore the headers. They're just there to give me space in here so I can get the two sort of directly in the middle of them. Um, that's, that don't even go in that cylinder, but that is looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. And I've got all my weld points and everything. Right, what's next? Um, actually, can I tuck it in place? No, I can't. I need these, don't I? Um, engine mounts. I've got to drill the side rails and stick these in. Actually, I need to make two more of these. Because I've got the ones at the front and I've got the ones down the side. So I need to make a couple more of them. Drill some more holes in my lovely new frame. <laughs> And then I could probably weld this side up, I think. I think. Um.
True to tradition, I cocked up again. <laughs> I did, it's quite a big one as well. I set everything up, turned all the mics on and everything else, and something obviously wasn't plugged in. There is no sound to anything that we've been chatting about. <laughs> For the whole morning. For the whole morning, there is nothing. So, we are going to do a quick little recap and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think where, actually. <laughs> right, okay. So... Uh, engine mount was the last bit that I needed to sort out. So um, for the side engine mounts, um, I used my little jig thing again. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to set that vertically on there. I've got it all marked up and everything, which I did explain earlier, but you didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is um, that the side engine mounts, the lower ones, they're going to go in vertically. So I've, I've made some more of these little jobbies you've seen them before but they're going to get set in like that um, and then I'm going to machine up uh, a solid piece which follows the curvature of the tube and then there's just a plate that comes up a bit like this over here um, where it all sort of bolts into that one over there doesn't need to be removable but I'll make the same sort of fix in and that will just be welded onto the frame mm. so that'll all be good well, it's probably going to be part and parcel of that side bit anyway um, we've got holes in the side of the frame here for this engine mount again just using this um, essentially there's an engine mount point there so we set this a little bit lower got the angle right got it all trued up and i just i just stuck some holes in it on brian basically so the engine mounts was the last bit we needed to do and then everything has been tacked which is all quite cool. It's solid frame and the engine easily comes out. It still bashes on that bit. Yeah, but that's going to be that, but that's, anyway. That's the only bit that it, it clobbers on. Um, it doesn't have the valve cover, doesn't have the sump on it, but it's a doddle to get in and out. And the old frame, that was a nightmare to get in and out yeah. without the valve tray, the, the valve cover and the sump. So that extra little bit 20 mil I think is going to make all the difference yeah got a plan for doing this bit as well we'll cover that later in another video when I actually make the thing but that's going to be quite awkward and that's going to be quite awkward down there too <laughs> I can't believe I didn't turn it on I can't did what I was doing so well I need just a massive tidy up tonight <laughs> Stuff uh, it's, it won't. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's busy, but it's not, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, or it's not as bad as what it has been before. Yeah, true. I Things just. Though, mate, when, you got, when you're doing stuff like that, there's so many different bits of tooling and so many different bits that you're working on. I've, I've had everything. There's been points in here I just cannot move. It is ridiculous. And this, um, this is the thing, it's your. You just spread it out everywhere. As soon as yeah. you get the engine out, you stick it on the side and all that sort of stuff. It's, uh, all your room just disappears. Um, but I think we're off to a pretty good start. I am liking wait, it. Wait, I, I, I know I've said it, but I do, I, I do like that. I do like that, mate. I think that looks proper. It is turning out well. Yeah. I am, so far, I'm happy. Oh, look, the, I'm finally getting some heat off the heater. <laughs> it's now time, going. Time, time to go, and it starts working. So, I mean, so far, I'm, I am happy with it, but it's the, it's the other side that's got me worried. Um, just, long, there is a long way to go, admittedly. But, well, uh, it's just because of that side stand and that engine mount and the fact that 
because I've changed all this lot, I've only got that space there to work with. Yeah. So all that lot is going to be stacked one on top of the other. Size stand's going to have to move forward just a little bit, and that's going to have to be a solid piece, which I need to machine. So it's... Yeah, it's going to make it more... Complicated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can see what you mean. It's going to make it more complicated. But, um... Oh, it's all doable. But in terms of the way the frame looks, I like it. Yeah, if you have a look at the the side that I've done, slightly chunkier and all that sort of stuff, and then you have a look at the messy side on the other side with all the bits and everything else. I know we're going to have brackets and stuff coming off of it, but they're going to be nice looking brackets, and it's not all going to be blobby welds and stupid holes in places where they don't need to be stupid holes in it and all that sort of stuff. And it's not going to be purple either. <laughs> That's probably the best bit. But it does look cleaner. It does look cleaner. It does. So, um, I'm going to get all this welded up tomorrow. And then start dressing it all down and all that sort of stuff. But, let's we'll see how we go. Oh yeah, congratulations on 9,000 subs, mate. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It is mad. That, that is insane. Um, how long ago, how long ago did we... Did you start? Uh, it's got to be just good. over a couple of well, years when we started on Jitsin. Well, Craig has been doing his thing for two years, isn't he? After the whole marriage breakup and whatnot. Yeah, so it's got to be probably... So it's a little bit longer than that, because we went up to see him, didn't we, yeah, when it was still the two of them. And that was still quite early on, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 9,000 people, though. That is an awful lot of people. It is an awful lot. Can you imagine getting them all together? you imagine if they all rocked up round here? It'd be busy. <laughs> How much space would you need to put 9,000 people in? Actually, good okay. question. How many, like, if you was to get everybody together, yeah, and, and so 9,000 people all sitting down watch, watching one of the episodes to say, okay, cinema. How yeah. many people can you get in a cinema? We've got view. How many screens do they get? How, how many people can you get in there? You can get like eight, nine screens, isn't it? So... How many, how many did you get in the thing? Probably different sizes, didn't they? But probably, aren't they? Between three and 400 people per screen. I mean, we could feel a cinema. We could almost feel two cinemas. <laughs> Actually, put it in context then. Uh, football stadium. What we got? Um, Green Army, that one. Home Park, that's Home it. Park. Home Park, on. How many people can you get in Home Park? I, find I want to know now, actually. Could we fill a stadium? Ew. I really didn't clean this very well, did I? How many people can you get in Home Park? Home of Argyle, Home Park. Yeah. Capacity is, according to Google, yes. 16,388. 16,000. Yeah. Okay, so we can't fill a football stadium. <laughs> no, but we're too set well. well. We're over half. I bet Craig, how many, how many subs has Craig got? Uh, he could fill a stadium. I'm going to get a picture of Home Park. I'm going to stick it up and I'll colour in what we can do. But what can Craig do? Because he's mega. I'll watch every single one of his episodes. Doghouse Customs? Yep. Yeah. According to YouTube? <laughs> Don't do that according to YouTube. How many? 15,800 and something. So he can pretty much fill, fill a football stadium. Sta so fill a football fill stadium. Park, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a big screen there as well, I think, as well. There you go. Uh, who else? Andy. Go on. Andy's motorcycle obsessions. He must be out of full of stadium. He's been going for quite a long time, actually. <laughs> It's one of those so Andy's, things, Andy's motorcycle obsessions. Go on. 22,200. <laughs> 22,000. 200 and something, yeah. So, so that's stadium. stadium and nearly oh, a third. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, okay, we're doing them. Matt, the workshop. He's got to be like 70, whatever it is. 80,000 maybe. Near a 90,000. <laughs> so that's what? 32, 64, 80. So that's the best part of five and a half, nearly six <laughs> home parks. <laughs> Jesus. 
Yeah, 90,000. That puts it in context, doesn't it? Yeah. That is... Ma- okay, how Ten about... Ten times more than Yao. Yao. <laughs> what about um, he who oh. must not be named... Oh, really? Because you might upset him or use yeah. his logo in an Lionel appropriate or way or... and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean. Uh, unfortunately, I do. God, how many has he got? Because he's been going... What? Like, what? I'm sure. <laughs> 186,000. 186,000. That's 11 and a bit home parks. 11. <laughs> Why? There's something wrong with 11. You know. 11 and a bit. I feel really inadequate now. <laughs> well, you're probably feeling more inadequate because you didn't put the sound on the first Well, yeah, it didn't help really. <laughs> 11 foot. That's 186,000. We've got a ways to go there, no. <laughs> it's going to work. I know it's going to work. Um, if you believe in something, it will happen. <laughs> anyway, mate, I'm going to have to chip off. Yeah, that's been good. It's nice seeing you. Do you have to come down more often, mate? I will try. I will try and get down more often, mate. You know that. I say now things are sort of back to normal, and uh, I say I'll. I'll, I'll see you. I'll, I'll be back. I'll come back down on the Saturday in a couple of weeks. It'll be good. To back in there. I'll see, break that. See the progress. See if you can fix that. <laughs> it just fell out on the floor. You try getting the bugger back in. <laughs> <laughs> You're not having a lot of luck with your car, are you? <laughs> Jack's working on his car mm. and he's just banged on the door going, I've got some news. Yeah. It's not very good news. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... Jack is now on a two and a half hour trip up country to get a park. He can't source it locally. Past where I live. Past where you live. And then they're <laughs> going to come, come back. back. And then they've got to get it fixed. So he's going to go next door to help. But that's going to be three man's labour now, not two. Mm. <laughs> anyway, it is nice to have you back in the shop, though. You, nice you are going to have to come nice back to more often. We will. I will be. I will say. I'll like. Uh, I got. I got. I got a couple of weeks with the girls, and uh, but then I'll uh, after that I'll uh, arrange to pop down and spend the day in the shop on a Saturday, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see whether there's another side. Oh, there should be. Hopefully, now I know what I'm doing, or I've got a good idea what I'm doing, mm. I should be able to knock the other one out. I've just got to make that insert. But yeah, that's, that's the bit that's worrying me. But compared, I know, I, I know it's a completely different thing, obviously, Suzuki, you have to make that frame to a, to a budget and it's put together. But, it's uh, not a very big budget, and, is it? <laughs> no. And this is obviously a, a custom jobby. Yeah. But... It's going to look it, good. It, it just goes to show you how much, how much nicer it it could have been, and how much prettier it could have been. Yeah. I do like I do like what you've done. It's good so far. Yeah. Right. That's where I'm going to leave it today. I'm going to come back in tomorrow and weld all this lot up and start dressing it up, and I'll show you what I do there. So that'll obviously be the next one. And then there's a couple of little clamps and stuff I need to make, and then we can chop out the other side and have a go at that. Yay! And it'll start looking a lot nicer. I will get a picture and show you the difference between the nice clean bit that I've stuck on <laughs> and the not so nice rest of it that is still there. <laughs> Just so you can sort of see the difference. The but ugly it is, other side. It is looking good. It is. So anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. We'll see you again on the good next one. Good to see you one. folks. Bye.